This is a condensed narrated version of a longer set of videos about testing microinverters using solar array simulators. One microinverter is used for each solar panel installed in a solar energy collection system. The DC output of the solar panels are connected to the DC input of each microinverter and the microinverter converts that DC into usable AC that eventually gets routed down to a circuit breaker box. I have here a individual solar cell. Looks like this. So what I'll do next is measure the IV curve of this solar cell under various illumination levels to show you what a solar array simulator is expected to simulate. I'm using a floodlight to illuminate the cell and I'm drawing current from the cell with a power supply acting as an electronic load. I'm also using an oscilloscope in XY mode to capture the solar cell's IV curve. Current is on the vertical axis and voltage is on the horizontal axis. I'm capturing this IV curve by slowly turning up the current drawn from the cell under full floodlight illumination. Simulate some cloud cover just by putting that over here. So let's take another look at the uh, IV curve and we see it starts at about the same open circuit voltage but the short circuit current is now a bit lower. And this is a bit darker as you can see so this is even more simulating more cloud cover. Current is substantially lower with that amount of cloud cover. So we just looked at how a solar cell behaves under full light conditions and two filtered light conditions simulating cloud cover on a solar panel. Each light condition produces a different IV curve and since a solar panel is normally connected to the input of a microinverter, the microinverter must work with all of these various IV curves on its input. Since the microinverter has to be tested with a variety of IV curves on its input, that's where the solar array simulator is useful. It is expected to mimic the output of a solar panel under various light conditions. But why simulate instead of using the sun in an actual solar panel? We can see that under normal circumstances the sun is shining down on the solar module which then produces DC output voltage and that's the input to the microinverter the microinverter converts the DC input to AC output and that gets fed onto the power grid. Well, it's very difficult to implement and control the sun and a solar module, so we use a simulator to do that, a solar array simulator. Here is actually the test setup that I'll show you for testing the microinverter. We have the SAS as the input on the inverter, the DC input, and the output is actually tied to several light bulbs used as an AC load and also to our Agilent 6812B AC source and what this is doing is it's simulating the power grid by putting out 240 volts AC at 60 Hertz which is exactly what this microinverter puts out, 240 volts at 60 Hertz. The actual setup is shown right here. Again, I've got the SAS is the top box here, and its DC output actually runs over to the DC in on the microinverter. The AC output of the microinverter comes out and it gets fed into my bank of lights here, which act as an AC load. We can't control these hardly at all. And the AC load or these lights are also hooked up to eventually plugged in to the output of our AC source which is right there. That's simulating the grid. So let's actually take a look at this operating. I'm going to turn on the instrument so we can really see what happens here when we test the microinverter. Just hit voltage, 240, enter, it's already set for 60 Hertz, so I'm just going to enable the output and you'll see in the background the light bulbs will be glowing. 
So now I need to turn on the DC output of the solar array simulator to provide DC input voltage to the microinverter. So there I just turned on the output and it's providing 45 volts as DC input to the inverter. I had previously programmed an IV curve in the solar array simulator and you can see from the front panel that no current is yet flowing because the inverter has to synchronize its output with the simulated grid from the AC source at 60 Hertz and 240 volts. Once the microinverter detects the proper DC input and AC output voltages, it waits about five minutes before it turns on supplementing the grid power with power from a solar panel. So the AC source or grid is providing 100% of the power to the light bulbs right now with zero power coming from the solar array simulator and microinverter combination. The AC source meter is now showing voltage and power so you can see the power going to the light bulbs is 240 watts. The grid is providing 100% of the power because the microinverter has not turned on yet to start supplementing that power from the grid. Again, it'll take about five minutes, so we'll cut away and we'll come back in about five minutes. Okay, it's been about five minutes. The microinverter is just about to turn on, and there it is. It's drawing current now from the SAS, and the power has gone from 240 watts that we were consuming from the simulated grid has gone down from 240 watts down to about 164 watts. So the difference there is being supplied by the microinverter. With a LAN connection to the Agilent SAS, I can use the built-in web server to monitor the programmed IV curve that is providing DC input power to the microinverter. Once again, current is shown on the vertical axis and voltage on the horizontal axis. Also notice the red triangle. That indicates the actual output voltage and current of the SAS, otherwise known as the operating point. The maximum power point on the curve is at the knee of the curve, and it is the job of the microinverter to keep the operating point at the knee of the curve to harvest as much power as possible from a solar panel. As I increase the current of the IV curve, simulating more sunlight, the microinverter does a really good job of maintaining operation at the maximum power point. At this higher power point, more power is flowing from the microinverter to the light bulbs in my setup than from the AC source. That means in the real world, more energy to the AC load would be coming from the sun instead of from the utility company. So I've been using an Agilent E4360A solar array simulator to test the microinverter. And uh, this is actually an N-phase energy microinverter. It's a, I have the manual for it right here. It's an M175. It's a design that's been around for a couple of years, but still works very well. And um, in the manual, there's quite a few specifications. So typically the solar array simulator is used in design and development. It might be used in uh, product verification for doing environmental testing, for life cycle testing, or it could even be used to do certification testing to make sure that the uh, inverter complies with uh, various regulatory standards. And the things that I see here on the spec sheet, things like the maximum PowerPoint tracking, that algorithm has to be tested in the design environment. Uh, things like the efficiency of the inverter are extremely important. Um, things like output power factor, voltage and frequency range, uh, output over current protection, all these things are specs on the microinverter. And the solar array simulator is an invaluable tool to provide the input IV curves on the DC input for the microinverter.